views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. You are listening to Living Lighter Radio. I'm Jason. And I'm Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. Living Lighter provides a revolutionary way to address what's truly holding you back. We have the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time, be living lighter. Join us now for a living lighter experience. This is Living Lighter Radio, and I'm Patricia. I'm here with my husband, Jason. Today, we're going to talk about fitness. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> She's making me do push ups, actually. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what you are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. And, you know, sweetie, now that I'm done with my push-ups, you you know, I want, (laughs) she made me do push-ups actually. But today I really want to talk about, since it's Earth Day yesterday, it was Earth Day yesterday, it's fitting that the ecosystem approach that we talk about is truly a green process in terms of your personality. Now, we don't think in terms of green and personality, but it's really important. The truth is that your personal ecosystem, which is includes your emotions, your moods, your feelings, and your authentic self, are, not, are rarely part of the equation. And that most people think in terms of um, goals and pushing themselves and in terms of fitness, you know, that hard driving, self-disciplined, focused, goal-driven approach is what we think fitness is all about. But the truth is that's really toxic to your ecosystem. Oh, no. It's bad. It's not a good thing. And the truth is, is that um, having a green approach to you is the most important thing you can do to making the world green. Because if you're planting a tree, but your personal energies are very toxic to yourself, it's um, less impactful. And frankly, the most impact that you can have is starting with yourself first, making a commitment to your own personal ecosystem. And I know that's, it's, it's hard to understand. We've had, um, we've had a couple of people reach out to us and say, well, I, I just don't understand that yet. And, please just hang in there with us because it's a very important thing. If you make that commitment to have your own personal ecosystem, uh, to be as green as possible, the reason we're doing this radio show is because it's not easily understood. And the truth is programming is everywhere. It's in everything we do. It's in, in how we're educated, how we're taught. One of the things that we found out through our own experience is that the programming that is happening and happened to all of us keeps us from actually hearing and understanding what that ecosystem approach is, what the green personality is, even what the authentic self is. And it's so important to just kind of hang in there with us and you're going to get a little piece of, of understanding here and a little piece there. That's the way Jason and I started out. We didn't know everything all at once and it was through doing the clearing Almost every day, or I should say every day, we really using our learned, intuition. Yes, using, using our intuition, we really learned so much, not only about ourselves, but our environment slash ecosystem of ourselves and how it fits into the world. We just moved to a place that's close to Yosemite, which is John Muir Country, and he was he, he's been noted as one of the founders of the. Um, um, the green movement. The green movement. Yeah. And he understood the joy that comes from being in a natural environment. The truth is that most of us, if you if you could see what we see, most people don't live in their own body in a natural environment. Their um, whole emotions, moods, um, energies that are attached to them are really toxic. And 
if you make a commitment, and that's what I'm kind of encouraging you to do today. Just you don't have to you don't have to do anything. You don't have to wave a flag. You don't have to um, um, do a hundred pushups. Nope, nope. I okay. I stopped that already. So none of that's necessary. Just say, yeah, that's kind of what I want. And the way you can do it is keep listening. Sign up for a newsletter. If you're um, um, if you're making a commitment, we'd love to just hear you. Um, send us an email or hear you, see you have sent us an email. Hear Jason. from you. Yes, Jason and Patricia at livinglighter.org. So um, um, I want to talk about some of the wrong-headed thinking in most fitness programs. You know, wait, wait a minute, Jason. How does all this fit into, no pun intended, fitness? What you're talking about, those green personalities, um, ecosystems, authentic self, explain the connection um, as best you can. Most of us think well, when it comes to fitness, thinks we have to push ourselves, we have to drive ourselves, we have to be no pain, no gain. But but Jason, that's the way I learned it. You know, we, we sign up for a, a gym locally and we get, you know, a monthly newsletter. It's a national chain. But all of their advertising is about, you know, I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hard driving. I'm gonna make it happen this month. You know, I'm gonna yeah. redouble my efforts, you know. Right. And that's not healthy. The truth is you, you can do, if you can focus on one part of your fitness, but then completely um, um, overlook the, another part. And the truth is, is that, um, you know, when I was, uh oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you, warn the audience, I'm doing an army story, um, but- uh, Oh no. You know, she, <laughs> producer rolls around trying to do army stories. But when I was, when I was in the army, I was tasked to, um, go to a fitness class. And some of you may not know or may know that in the army, physical fitness, they call it PT, is part of every day. So every day, the whole unit gets together and does PT. Now, whether it's whether it's small, small sections or the whole unit does it together, but it's commonplace. It's part of the culture in the army to, to do physical training all every day and doing it together. And the truth is, is that so I went, I was, I was sent to a class um, and these, um, they were teaching about how to be physically fit. Even 30 years ago, the people were saying the way they do it in the rank and file, this no pain, no gain, macho type of approach. Environment. environment. Yes, environment and approach to, to physical training, PT, wasn't effective. And even the army experts are saying you shouldn't do it that way, yet it still it hung on and hung on, and now you know thirty forty years you know a um, few pounds later, it's, it's <laughs> they're still advocating that, and they don't understand that that this hard driving approach to physical fitness, um, is, even physiologically, is not uh, very positive. Not to mention to your your emotional self. Yes, exactly. So um, um, I just wanted to make that make that um, that. That uh, that point. Yeah, that point about that. Yeah. You know, 100 years ago, the idea of going to a gym or being physically fit would have been crazy. Yes, but there weren't near as many machines, and I don't mean that in a in a you know I'm not making a pun here. I'm saying to survive, you had to be physically fit. You, to survive, you had to be physically fit. Today, you don't. And it was nothing to walk um, two miles, three miles to town if you didn't have a horse. The point is. This, the po point is not about horses, but you're, you know we all have to have some sort of um, exercise and physical training. It's how we implement it. The ecosystem approach is about how we do it. Exactly. Not whether we do it. Exactly. It's about how. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment. Yeah. In, you know, in other words, let's. I'm going to back it up and say the attitude in which you approach it from. It's, it's attitude, yes, but it's also the ecosystem approach is about working with the energy first as opposed to – things that you do. But me being an emotional person, Jason, the energy basically is my attitude. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in the army, you know, I, I, I'm always telling Patricia about this, about these boot camp approaches to physical fitness. I went to boot camp and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. The truth is they that were a form of hell, weren't they? It, it, it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. Right. And um, the drill sergeant always said his grandmother could do it better than I could do it, you know. <laughs> and everybody else, their their grandmothers were very competent in the in the the drill sergeants had really competent grandmothers because they were always doing it better than than we could. The truth being is that that approach 
if you if you're getting ready for war, maybe. But if you're going to have a have a healthier existence, a green personality, a better balanced ecosystem, it's not the approach to have. So so what kind of approach should we have? Well, I'm going to back it up for just a moment. You know, I just remembered something. I've done a lot of training myself. I have a few certifications in in aerobics, more than one, actually. And um, the basis for those certifications was competition. And competition is could be some people's worst enemy. Competition can create a lot of negative energy. And, you know, even the biggest loser, we talked about that last week. Right. That's really toxic. And the truth is not sustainable. So when we talk about an ecosystem approach to fitness, okay. what are the key words? Sustainability. We want you to start and then be able to continue. You don't do that with a hard driving approach. It's not sustainable. Goal driven um, push yourself. How about to have fun? Exactly. How about to have fun? So sustainability, um, it should be enjoyable, a, enjoyable, fun. And we remove the energy that's anything that's blocking um, you from doing your exercises. Right. Let's think of it as uh, converted into an energy that can be cleared, which we're going to do at the last segment today. Right. And make it better. So. So with that said, stay tuned. When we come back. We're going to talk about huge misconceptions around exercise machines, apps, and devices, and personal trainers. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. How powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day -day language that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge Radical Change with Ease with my co-host Dr. Pat on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Do you know how to achieve wellness in all areas of your life? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Signs of wellness are a capacity to love and ability to nurture, a sense of purpose, a good sense of humor and plenty of fun in your life, a concern for others and a respect for the environment, a conscious commitment to personal excellence, a sense of balance and integrated lifestyle, and capacity to cope with whatever life presents. Well, people enjoy their lives and want them to last as long as possible. That's why the wellness mindset usually accompanies other constructive, healthy lifestyle habits. By adopting a wellness mindset, and behaviors like eating well, taking the right nutrition for the body, exercising, and saying affirmations are just a few things to structure a healthy system of values and beliefs. I will be your wellness coach to help you achieve a wellness lifestyle. Call us at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at maryjanemack.com. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit empoweringenergy.com. That's empowering with letters N-R-G.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? 
For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason, and I'm Patricia. Today we're talking about fitness. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what you are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. So we're going to talk about common misconceptions about the Fitbit, the fitness apps, exercise equipment, and even personal trainers. And I want to say, first of all, that we're, it's not black and white. We're not saying that's all bad. We're saying those can be really excellent uses of all of those things. And we'll talk about how you can use it and then how it gets in the way. And again, it's about, it's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. And right. the ecosystem approach is much different. And maybe we can contrast that. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, we, we know a busy executive who um, um, has one of those jobs where it's 10,000 details a second. She's always got people coming at her. She has to get this done. She has to get this done. It's, it's a um, high intense, uh, high work intensive in, work, work environment. environment. Absolutely. And um, she just recently got a Fitbit and she's using it. And it serves as a reminder that um, once an hour she has to get up and move. And it, it counts, obviously, as you, as you probably know, it counts your steps for the day. And if you're not having enough steps, you can, you can um, it kind of nudges you because for her, there's a lot of competition between her thinking about, she doesn't really have the time to say, okay, how do I feel? What, she, she needs to be nudged and, and, um, and reminded, reminded that because she's so busy. She's so busy. Yeah. And it's, it's a great, it's a great application for the Fitbit. Yes. You know, we're not against the Fitbit. The problem comes, and maybe you could talk about um, my, my experience yes, with, the, with, okay. with the watch. Yes, with the watch. Yes, that was before. Well, I think the Fitbit was out then, but it wasn't no, as popular. No, it, was, oh, it okay. wasn't. It was. It was Fitbit was right after that. But anyway, um, I have another story, and this is how not to use the Fitbit or the apps or um, even or the exercise equipment or even allow the personal trainer to push push you. Um, I, for many of you, you don't know, or you might know, um, I taught water aerobics for years and other aerobic exercises. And, um, I had a woman come into my class and she was definitely in need of some physical exercise and she had this watch on and I, I wasn't really paying attention to that. And she got in the water and uh, as soon as the music started, I had I have routines. My safety is number one in my class, in any class that I teach, for the simple fact of that people don't know when it's too much for them. People because they're not connected to themselves. Because they're programmed. Because they're programmed. And this woman was no exception. In fact, she was <laughs> no exception to this rule at all. She started out and she hit it hard right out of the gate. Well, in my world that doesn't work it's not good for you it's not right and she kept going and so i i kind of like just let it go but i noticed that a lot of my class was watching her and so at the end of the class and by the way she doubled and triple timed it whenever we were just even double timing it ourselves she was doing 10 times more and so at the end of the class i said uh, excuse me um can i ask why you were doing what you were doing and she said well the watch said that my heart rate wasn't up high enough. The watch said I wasn't working hard enough. And I said, I don't agree with the watch. And so she said, oh, you know, she kind of shrugged it off and walked away. She came back the week, a week later, and she started doing the same exact thing. Well, I could see a heart attack coming on. I could see, you know, not good stuff. I saw injury of some kind. And in my opinion, that not going to happen in my class if I can prevent it. So, so the point is, so is the that, point is that it's um, 
um, you know, Patricia uses her intuition. And the truth was that you didn't require a high level of intuition when she was huffing and puffing. <laughs> no. You know, you could you could see she was creating Every, her own heart attack. It everybody was, was seeing it. It was more than she could handle. Exactly. But she she, she wasn't was, aware of it because she was focused on the watch. And as she opposed was just going to pay attention to the watch only, not to anything about herself. And I have to tell you, when you're doing fitness of any kind, I don't care who you are. You have to pay attention to you because if you don't pay attention to you, you're heading for trouble. It's, there's no problem in pushing it from time to time. No, of course not. But be, be able to do that. Most people, when they start a fitness program, they get really gung-ho and yes. they push themselves so mm-hmm. much that they injure themselves. Exactly. And again, remember what I've we done said? I've done it. I've done it. The main point – for a fitness program is sustainability. Yes. And if you push it too hard in the beginning, which almost everybody does, then you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to pull something, strain something. Break something. You know, and the other thing is that it's kind of obvious, but if you push yourself and you make yourself do it, it's no fun. Well, and you got to have fun. And two weeks from now, three weeks later, right. you think, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, <laughs> and I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to do it either. And some people don't even get that far. They don't some even get that far. Some people don't get that far. The other thing is, is that that self-sabotage that happens, it's a reaction that happens because of the, I have to follow the rules. I have to follow the fitness program and I don't have to listen to myself. That creates self-sabotage. And what do we do? Oh, I don't want to go exercise today. So let's see if we can make, make it more clear. Okay. An ecosystem approach, what you do is you uncover. So if you get up to go and do your fitness program for the day and you don't feel like it, what do you do? Well, an ecosystem oh, approach. Wine? You, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That's not the ecosystem approach. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> you know, if, you, if, if you're married to someone, you might hear that, okay? Um, it's not, we always do it. Uh, work out together and we we do it because it's fun for us we, yes. that's our time that we spend together and uh, we're gonna talk about marriage next um um next hey segment. that was my line at oh, the end yeah. of the show okay. jason okay go ahead you can still Let's, steal it yet okay yeah, yeah. here we go but the truth is is that um when you don't don't feel like it what we suggest that you do is you clear the feeling of i, I don't, don't wanna. want to and then I don't see wanna. what happens. Or, or you can if you want to just take it's resistance it's a form of resistance and if something else comes up resistance. Oh, you know, my mother always pushed me. My, you know, my father said I was fat. I don't know that, you know, depending on what's going on. Those are the things you gotta, those are the things you can clear. Most of us, most of us choose, um, um, goals and objectives right. that, um, aren't fitting for who we are. No pun intended. I, I had a client one time who who called me, she, I was working with some of her relatives and she said, I, yeah, I just want to lose a few pounds. And I said, fine. So we started in and as we started on cover, she was the most, and I saw it first, of course, but she was the most depressed person I had worked with in a long time. And she wanted to lose a few pounds. I mean, if you understand ecosystem, that's way out of balance. If you're, if you're so depressed and she, she had some profound um, depression. It's not time to work on fitness. It's time to work on the depression. Well, it, it, it or go for a walk is great, yes. but not push and drive yourself yes. because you're using that as your motivation, that anger and that hate of, of depression. If it weren't for programming methods that we've been taught all of our right. life, we would know, well, I need to work on this as opposed to this. But the truth is most of us and we see it every single day. We, we don't know what we're supposed to work on. And by the way, if you don't work on those other things first, no matter how hard you try or how, oh, I'm going to zen myself into, you know, a form of, of working out, what happens is you end up creating one more time resistance, self-sabotage, um, hate of yourself. We can go on and on and on about the negative energies that happen. It's the time to be clearing. And by the way, one of the great best things ever is to clear when you're doing a walk. Yes. Oh, it is just so amazing. That's how you connect with the joy. So let's talk about the the uh, exercise equipment. Okay. One of our pet peeves, and um, we've we go into a, we've had a gym where we used to live, and now we have a gym here, and we go there two or three times a week, and we see people. You know, we're in this beautiful place right outside of Yosemite. 
it's spectacular right now. It's spring. It's yep. beautiful Flowers weather. Are just amazing. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. And we see people come into the gym, stuffy air, and walk on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't understand it. The truth is that the most healthy thing you can do is walk in nature because you absorb that energy of the natural world, which is a form of joy. Now, this is what John Muir talked about. Right. And as you as you remove those negative energies and you absorb that positive stuff that we're going to talk about in our fourth segment, right. um, it can be amazing. But but using an exercise equipment um, when you have such when you have these nice options, it's um, it's doesn't make sense to us. Now, I grew up in Minnesota. There are times you cannot go um, out, exercise go that, out for yeah. a walk when it's 30 below. And, you know, if you if you slipped and fell and couldn't get up, you might freeze to death before you could call out for help. <laughs> I get it. There are times, you know, there are times when it's so hot that it's, you know, ex, um, you know exercising is crazy outside out. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right. So it's not black and white, but we want to, you know, we want to encourage Remember, you. Remember, it's how not how you do it. It's the energy in which you do your exercise. It's not what you do. It's how it's. Yeah, it's the energy in which you do it. Right. Yes, exactly. So in sustainable sustainability is always the real goal and to listen to your body and to say, okay, what do I need in this moment? What's in my best interest in this moment? And if you want to do, go for a walk, but you can't get there, clear what's keeping your way. Depression, right. sadness. I don't want to boredom, you know, feeling fat. Yes. Oh, that's a biggie. <laughs> it is. A, it's a big one. Absolutely. So, um, so, you know, we started, we started, you know, Patricia and I've done this for years now, and we will back off on our exercise routine if other things get in the way because we don't want right. to force it. We don't want to make it un, um, undesirable. Right. We want to make it fun. And, and we do. And if it's not fun, then we're not doing it. Yeah. So. Um, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about an ecosystem approach to being fit. You don't want to miss this one because you won't hear it anywhere else. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as we, Jason and Patricia, discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information about Living Lighter, visit www.livinglighter.org. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Fantastic has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's Emma's in Mary, Emma's in Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. 
choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Let it go radio. The future awaits you. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Barbara Scheidegger explores the way to clarity, peace, and how to live a successful life on your terms by turning negative experiences into positive ones. Barbara's curiosity about the human experience drives her both personally and professionally. As a life coach, author, and renowned clinical hypnotherapist, Barbara knows how to move forward in a natural, organic way without side effects. If you want to grow, be sure to tune in to Let It Go Radio. To learn more, visit LetItGoHypnosis.com. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason, and I'm Patricia. Today, we're talking about fitness. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what we are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. You know, one of the things that we we promise you tell you about in the last segment was about fitness trainers. And again, like it's not, not black and white. There's nothing wrong with having a fitness trainer. The truth is if you need to be um, encouraged, if you need someone to, um, to lay out a fitness program for or you. Or show you a way. You know, in a way, Jason, I was a fitness trainer when I did water aerobics. I get that. And um, if you have a, um, a fitness trainer that was um, schooled in the Nazi academy, you know, <laughs> I, I would su- suggest that you might find another one. Right. But there's nothing wrong with them. The problem is that that they may not adjust your training schedule um, based on how you your body is feeling or even check in with how you're feeling right. or how your body is to, to uh, pace your workout so that it's sustainable. And again, that's the key word is sustainability. Absolutely. I, I just want to interject this one little thing. One of the things I said in every class that I did was no dead bodies in the pool. I was, so, I mean, it was just one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the truth is, is that a lot of us, the way we approach our, our fitness program, we could kill ourselves. That's the point. Trying no to do No dead it. bodies in the pool. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So <laughs> go ahead, sweetie. I'm- so, so applying the ecosystem approach to fitness, let me see if we can show how that happens. Okay. You know, we... Uh, we, ch- we try and make it sustainable. We try and make it fun. We check in. You know, Patricia and I, um, one of the ra- ways that we make it fun is, you know, even though we work together, we work out of our home um, and we're in this beautiful place. The truth is, you know, we can be working all day and, and barely, you know, just see each other, pass each other in the hall. So our fitness time is our time together. Right. And almost always we'll, we're going to be clearing together while we do that you know it's um and and it doesn't mean you have to find a partner to do clearing while you're out there doing exercise you can do it on your own you sure can some people um um, have partners that they prefer to be alone (laughs) and the truth is that's a whole nother show everyone yes that's that's our next show is about marriage but the truth is is that you know whether you do it together or do it do it with someone or do it by yourself it's about making it fun for you Right. But, you know, Jason, I, 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 we need to back up and, and talk about we need to do baby steps. Yes. Baby steps. Do one thing every day. Do something that matters and is connected to you. Um, I, I just have a slight story. Um, one of my sisters um, said she struggled. She didn't she she wanted to do. Um, uh, she wanted to do Bible study, but then she also, she really wanted to get out there and, and work out, but she couldn't figure out how to do them both. Well, it was winter time and I told her, take your Bible and use your, your, uh, your fitness trainer then in, in, in your house, use your stair stepper. That's the word I was looking for. And she was like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. You know, two for two furs are yes. really effective. If exactly. you could do two things at once, um, you know, we, we use it um, 
our fitness time is um, sort of our meeting time too. Mm-hmm. We talk about what we're going to do, how right. we're going to plan the week, plan right. the day. Right. Yeah. And um, um, it, we make it fun for us. Now, what's fun for us is, may not be fun for you. Well, that's that concrete jungle I was talking about a minute ago. You know? Yes. You know, we're in this beautiful place. You may, um, we met uh, downtown San Francisco. That's exactly. where we used to work. Exactly. We made it fun. We we used to go out for, um, we create a little picnic lunch and go to a place where there's like um, um, two blades of grass and a and And 30,000 people. Yes. And um, we, we truly, truly enjoyed our time because we would sit there and clear. And it was so great to be able to do that. And um, people would ask us, what are you doing? Oh, we're having fun. You know, that kind of thing. It was great. So... So how do you implement an ecosystem approach to fitness? You check in with yourself by clearing. You know, if right. you say, okay, I'm, I'm about to do, you, let's say you have a plan, you're going you're gonna to go out and walk. We, in, in, incidentally, we consider walking one of the best ways, walking in nature is one of the best ways to start. But however you choose, whether it's bicycling, swimming, um, walking, um, treadmill. And not all of those are gym. for everyone. Yes. Exactly. And um, um, I do want to make one point. We use the gym for resistance training. We're not getting any younger. And we do know that resistance training really helps with our physical stature. But the but my point is, is that when you start, you, you take your objective. And slowly. And slowly. But that's not steps. my point. I'm trying to get my point out. Hey, it was my point. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, is that you clear first. Yes. And we're going to give you some clearings in, in the next segment and see how you're feeling. Check in. See how you're doing. Right. And because your authentic self, as you start to clear, and you might not make this connection right away, but your authentic self is your the ultimate trainer. It's your ultimate personal trainer. It can help you with the pace. It can help you make it sustainable. It can it can show you where the pitfalls are. You know, don't push it too hard today because you're going to, you know, you're going to um, sprain your ankle. It can tell you um, um, what to prioritize. Hey, today's not a day to, to go for a workout. Today's the day to work on that relationship you have with your your teenage daughter. Or your boss. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, when you take an ecosystem approach, it's much broader. See, what happens is when you have this goal-driven focus, it, it narrows your focus and you become myopic and you can't see – anything else around you and you're so focused on what you're trying to do, you leave a wake of negative energy, negative um, interactions around you that affect you. Exactly. Affect your overall health. Exactly. And it keeps us from knowing what is in our highest and best interest. So um, we're going to talk about how to do um, clearing and working with uh, life force in just a minute, but let's see if I can, let's see if I can review I we, love don't, it. we don't do enough reviews. Okay, so the ecosystem approach is come up with a guideline in terms of a program that you want to do, take baby steps, clear before you start, and whatever you feel in the moment, clear it away, and, um, and then take action or not, depending on how you're, how you're doing in the moment. Um, if we could listen to our bodies and let our bodies gauge what we need to do and what we don't need to do, will become far more effective and be healthier in the long term. A lot of people, when they start a fitness program, it's because they need to lose weight. And they say, I can't, you know, I, I can't take a slow approach. I am so, I am so impatient to get rid of this, these, this pounds. So what do you do? You clear the hate of self. Mm-hmm. You clear the hate of your weight now. Because the truth is, you have to clear that anyways because you're you, not going to be successful. If you lose the weight, it's going to come right back. Exactly. And that energy of hate of self has to be gone in order to um, um, make it better for you. And successful. Yes. You know, and, and the bottom line is, is that's what we're trying to do is be successful for ourselves. Because when we're successful for ourselves, then we can do the other things in life that we want to do successfully. So I'm going to explain how to clear real quickly. Please do. Um, Patricia's going to explain how to activate life force. It's a very similar process. And then in the next segment, we're going to do some clearing. Okay. So stay tuned for that. But here we go. This is how you, this is how you work with the energy. Um, use your imagination. That's your primary um, objective. Uh, that's, that's your primary tool. And the truth is that um, you don't have to be in any special posture, position. You can be standing on your head. 
Um, you don't have to say these words out loud. You can say them to yourself. You can say them in your mind's eye. And what you want to do is, as we say, to eliminate, gather up that emotion in your body, starting at the tips of your toes all the way up, and then blow it out into a garbage can. And put you can put the garbage can wherever you want. That's an imaginary garbage can. We own the garbage can. We're going to we eat, empty it. We empty it, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, just blow those um, negative emotions that we talk about into the into the garbage can. And by the way, using the garbage can is really, really, really important because without the garbage can, you're just leaving that waste, that toxic stuff laying around. So to activate life force energy, you're going to reverse the project. As you inhale, take into your heart life force energy. We see it as pure light. And be calm, be easy on yourself. If you're not being calm and easy, clear that, put that into the garbage can. It doesn't serve us. But with, with activating life force, we're bringing it in. We're not blowing it out. So when right. we'll, 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 do the, we'll do the eliminations. The eliminations are important because you don't want to sandwich that positive stuff on top of the negative stuff. Right. So we clear, clear first, remove the negative, and then we put the positive on top. And, um, and you can do that before you do your workout. You can do it while you're doing your workout. Yes. And um, it'll be very, very effective. Right. So, so stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be removing negative energy so you can be more fit. I think this is the best part of the show. I love this part. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. High frequency healing for an amazing life with Source Light Radio. Join host Laura Barton each month on Transformation Talk Radio as she explores Source Light integration, a unique spectrum of energy, light, and frequency. Experience instantaneous healing and amazing shifts in consciousness with Source Light Integrations Radio. For more information on Laura and her work, visit SourceLightIntegrations.com. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. Do you know how powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day language that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. 
to you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason, and I'm Patricia. We use an ecosystem approach to your life. Today, we're talking about fitness. So this segment, we promise you to do some um, clearing. clearing and activating life force. And we're just going to jump right in and get right to it. You can um, use this um, prior to any fitness program that you use. You can use it every day. I hope you. Um, this is being recorded, so you can come back to it over and over again. And um, um, we hope you um, um, enjoy it. Here we go. So remember, just in your mind's eye, starting with the tips of your toes, just take up the the motion that we say to elim- after to, lim- to eliminate and and then blow it out. And don't blow too hard. You don't have to blow. Um, if, you're, if you're breathing too hard or hyperventilating, it doesn't make it better. So just take a gentle breath. Here we go. I direct all my resources in all dimensions to eliminate my desire to push and drive myself from my fitness program. Take Gather a, that up. Take a breath. And blow it out. Let's do that one again. Just take a breath. My desire to push and drive myself for my fitness program. Good. And to eliminate my neediness to lose weight right now. Take a breath and do this slowly. Get rid of this. You don't need this. Take a breath. Blow it out. Let's, let's do this one one more time as well. And to eliminate my neediness to lose weight right now, take a breath from the tips of your toes. Blow it out. Good. My hate of my excess weight. Take a breath. My hate of my body. All the negative energies I have stored in my fat cells like hate, anger, hurt, and shame. Take a breath. Here's a big one. My neediness to eat my negative emotions. Take a breath. Here's the big one. And to eliminate disappointment in myself and my body that makes me feel guilty and ashamed. Take a breath from your toes. Here's a real big one. And to eliminate using hard exercising as a way to beat myself up because of guilt and shame. Take a breath. Can I, 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 I'm going to add one more major one. And to eliminate my pattern of being a couch potato because doing nothing is better than doing something. I release and let go that old pattern. Take a nice breath. Let's keep going. And to eliminate my need to motivate myself externally as opposed to uncovering my natural motivation from my authentic self. Take a breath. And to eliminate relying on machines, apps, personal trainers to push me and to drive me as opposed to uncovering that drive that I have naturally and organically within myself. Take a breath. Good one. And to eliminate my neediness for competition 
because without competition, it's the only competition is the only way I'll get up off the couch. I release and let go that energy, that illusion, and that illusion. Take a breath. My oh, be- that one was huge. Yes, my belief in self-discipline, force, um, being harsh with myself as a way to manage myself and the illusion that it's effective. Take a breath. So let's switch to activating life force. You know, this is the day after um, Earth Day, and we'll dedicate this to John Muir. How about that? Um, And um, um, he was a big advocate for life force and experiencing it in the natural world. So, so let's first experience it in you so, and to activate um, life force so I can feel the joy in the natural world. Take a breath. Just let it happen. Feel it. Make it easy, easy. That natural world could be a blade of grass in front of your concrete jungle. It doesn't matter. It can be a picture on your computer. It doesn't matter. And to activate life force so I can experience joy while being in nature. Imagine that clear, pure light coming in. And to activate life force energy so I can give myself permission to feel the light so I can feel the pure, clear light in myself. Take a nice breath. Easy. And to activate life force so I can dedicate myself to making my ecosystem better right now. Take a breath. And to activate life force so I can dedicate myself to an ecosystem approach as opposed to treating myself like a robot and a machine that needs to be programmed. Take a breath. And to activate life force So I can love myself enough to take the baby steps while I'm doing a fitness program. Take a breath. And to activate life force so that I can allow my body the time it needs to adapt to my exercise program and I can allow myself the time it takes, whatever it takes, to lose the weight and become more fit um, in a way that's natural to me. And stay fit. Take a breath. And to activate life force so I can make my fitness program fun and happy without guilt. Take a breath. Easy. Let that Light just rain down on you. Breathe. And to activate life force so I can have an ecosystem approach to my life. Take Take a breath. Good. So, Jason, you already blew it, but what uh, what are we going to talk about next week? Know, Let's surprise them all. I know I let, <laughs> let the cat out of the bag, but next week we're talking about marriage. And if any part of your life requires an ecosystem approach, it's, it's marriage. It's this one. The truth is that all these things kind of connect. Um, when you have an ecosystem approach, you know, fitness and marriage, weight loss, being happy, they're all connected. And we're going to talk about those connections um, Next week, we've got an interesting viewpoint on marriage that you might be uh, surprised. You can't miss this one. You have to tune in. So if you liked your experience with us today, mark your calendar. 
The Living Lighter Radio Show is every week at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you can't listen at that time, our show is recorded, and you can go to our website, www.livinglighter.org, and look for the radio tab. While you're on our website, sign up for our newsletter to get the backstory for Living Lighter Radio. And we love to hear your comments, so if you want to reach out to us and have a comment, um, it's Jason and Patricia at livinglighter.org. If you got a benefit today or had some fun, go like us on Facebook, where we're at livinglighter.org. We'll connect next week at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This is Transformation Talk Radio. You're listening to Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. Wishing you a lifetime of living lighter. Bye, everyone. See Talk ya. to you next week. Thank you for listening to Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. I'm Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly as we discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information, visit our website at www.livinglighter.org.